Hello once again, this is Brother Teacher. You know, the world is amazing, the world of martial arts more specifically, in that um, it never ceases to amaze me when you're looking for value in the men and women who go on this journey in martial arts. There's always someone out there that graces our presence that won't represent the values of this thing that we dedicate our lives to called martial science. And what I mean is that you have, it seems, an inordinate amount of people that join martial arts ranks, martial arts schools, systems, and even create their own martial arts systems, only to bastardize the arts, defame the integrity of the arts, proclaiming to be something that they're not not willing to put the work in, the hard work, as we used to say, and even still say some of us, the blood, sweat, and tears. To be the best person, the best human being, the best instructor, practitioner of the art that we can possibly be, you're always going to have someone that's going to mess it up for everyone. And the public is going to get a certain view of us and say, oh, is that what karate is all about? Is that what martial arts is all about? Or kung fu is all about? Arrogance, cockiness, bullying, narcissism, narcissism. I hate to even use those words because unfortunately, you do see that with hate to say, a significant amount of schools. Oftentimes, when men have the money and the influence, they open up dojos, or coons, dojangs, just because they have the resources to do so. And their egos are so inflated, they're cocky, they may have little to no real experience in martial arts. May have a family member that knows the martial arts or participated, may even, even have been a brown belt, red belt in martial arts, some style or whatever. And so they open it up, learn a little bit from them. They buy the equipment, fill the school up, advertise, merchandise, put it in the paper, maybe even on television. Next thing you know, voila, they have 100, 200 students. But the quality of the instruction stinks. Sound familiar? There are people just like that, past and even present. And what's even worse is that you have instructors who have been in the martial arts for years, credible, who have promoted guys and gals to black belt and even master, who are not even worthy of being in those positions. And some instructors are not worthy of the title of black belt and master. There is a requirement to even be an instructor. And just because you don the belt doesn't make you the thing. It has to be here to be the thing. To be a martial arts master 
is a very, very heavy load, a very heavy burden to bear. Notwithstanding a black belt alone, to be a master, what does that imply? You're the best of the best, so to speak. You are a superb black belt on another level. Someone has bestowed this position upon you because you were worthy. You have not only time in, you have training in, you have devotion, dedication to service in, even community service in. You've been recognized by your peers, by the martial arts community, by your neighborhood, by people who have witnessed you in many venues display your expertise. That's a true martial artist. That's a true master. Someone who's not selfish, who doesn't think of self only, but you think about the student. But you have these guys that run around, they call themselves masters. Some of them are self-appointed. Don't even know the basics well. No matter what the art, it could be karate, it could be kung fu, some form of. It could be something they slap together. It could be jujitsu or whatever. Don't even know the basics, the foundation, structure. They don't know physics very well. They don't know application, the science of fighting. And there is indeed a science to fighting. And many of them are so arrogant. A little arrogance 